So I'll answer questions on the homework for chapter 6, and then we're going to cover chapter 7. What's next week? A, a small quiz next week. Uh, remember there's an online part of it which probably went live about 10 minutes ago. So you guys can get online and do that. Um, if it doesn't pop up and it's not there, just let me know. I'll fix it. It should be there though. Um, what's on the, ch on the test? Uh, stuff from chapter 3, 4, 6, and 7. 3, 4, 6, and 7. There, there, pro there might be a bank reconciliation. Um, there's going to be probably some, you know, create an income statement balance sheet sort of stuff. Um, what else have we covered? Uh, Trial balance, yes. What else? In the online test. No, no, no. That'll be, this is the in-class part we're talking about. What else is on it? Accruals? Probably accruals, right? How do you calculate say depreciation, do you know how to uh, express the expense prepaid rent, um, things like that. Good? Okay. Closing entries, we talked about closing entries, that's a good reminder too. You know, if you're going to practice for the test um, and redo homework problems, do the PR problems, okay? Focus on those, because I'm going to tend to throw the bigger stuff at you on a test rather than the little exercise problems, okay? Other questions? Okay. So what homework problems do you guys want to want to have a look at from chapter 6? Okay, how many of you did your homework for chapter 6? Okay, everybody feel good about it? Pretty good? All right, if not, this is your chance to get even with me and ask. Problem 6-6, six, six. I would love to tackle problem 6-6. Six, six. That's on page 320, correct? Yes. Yeah. All right. So here's the ticket. Which version of the book do you want to use? I have version 7. Who would like to read the problem for us? This is PR 6-6. Six, six. Is it working? Yeah. Oh, it's working. Yeah. I'm sorry, what? 320. PR6-6, or P6-6. Oh, yeah, I'm used to PR, that's why I did that. Okay, you want to read it for me? And away we go. Preparing an income statement and computing gross profit percentage. Receivables turnover with discounts, returns, and bad debts. Uh, Tungsten Company Inc. sells heavy construction equipment. There are 10,000 shares of stock outstanding. The annual fiscal period ends December 31. The following condensed trial balance was taken at December 31, 2011. Oh, am I reading? No, it says 6-6. Six, six. What? Is it? Oh, bummer. So it's 6-5 in the 8th edition. It's the same problem as 6-6. Oh. Oh. We'll do a bank rec too. Let's do this one and then we'll do a bank rec. Fair enough? All right. So um, beginning with the amount for net sales, prepare an income statement showing both gross profit uh, and income from operation. Treat sales discounts and sales returns and allowances as contra revenue. Cool, we're going to do an income statement, right? Yeah. All right, I'm going to walk up here. I don't have my book. You're going to have to help me out now. What's the name of this company? Tungsten, Tungsten something or other. I think I've spelled it right. I don't know. Uh, income statement. 
and I believe it's December for the year ended December 31, 2011. Who, what, and when? Good? Okay. So at the top, we always start with revenue. And what do we have for revenue here? Sales revenue. Okay, we have sales. How much is that? 147100 Okay, so I'm good, right? Is that everything? No. No. So we, got, we need to derive net revenue from this. This is gross sales. Are there other sales accounts? No. No? Okay. So what are our contra accounts that go with this? Sales returns and allowances. Okay, so we've got sales returns. How much is that? $5,600. What else do we have? Sales discounts. Discounts. How much is that? $6,400. I feel like I did this last week. Did we do this problem last week? No. Okay. I'm having a moment there. Okay, what, what's next? Okay, do we have any other contra accounts that go with this? No. No? Okay, so what do I get from this? Sales, less returns, less discounts. Net sales. Net sales. Can someone spot me on the math here? 135,100. Okay, so I'm going to come out here 135,100. Good give myself a little room so I've got this column out here where I can just add and subtract straight down net revenue minus expenses, okay? What comes after net, net sales? Cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold, good. I'm getting a different number. I got 130 edition, seven. I got 134 for my numbers. Okay, we have a math challenge. That makes more sense. <laughs> it's 56. Okay, math challenge has been withdrawn. Moving on. Okay, so cost of goods sold. What goes into cost of goods sold? It's just the cost of the inventory, right? It's sales. Okay, what goes into cost of goods sold? The cost of the inventory? Sort of, right? Okay, we started with some inventory on hand, right? We have beginning inventory. Yes? And then we bought some more stuff. So we've got purchases. And then we may have paid some freight to get it here, right? And we may have gotten some uh, purchase discounts. Right, if we paid within 10 days or something like that, or it was on sale. Good. So we may get a discount. This would get you a uh, net delivered. Cost of goods sold. So this is, this is what we had, this is what we bought. These are some other costs that go with it to get it in and on the store shelf, right? Mm -hmm. So you get net delivered cost of sales. Cost of, yeah, cost of sales. That's uh, But then what else comes into play here all of a sudden? So is this all of our costs? Is that everything that is cost of goods sold? No. You're shaking your head no. What is your answer? Yes, we subtract something, but what is it? The ending. The ending, ending what? Inventory. Ending inventory, right? Less. Ending inventory. So we had some. 
we bought some more, but we didn't. So this gives us. I actually need. Um, hang on, I need to correct my language here on you guys. There we go. So we have beginning inventory. We have purchases plus the freight in, less the discounts, gives you net delivered cost of purchases. So that's this whole section here. And if you add beginning inventory to net delivered cost of purchases, you get goods available for sale. So this is everything we had in the warehouse at one point in time. We sold some of it, but not all of it. We had some inventory left at the end. And since we didn't sell that, we subtract from the goods available for sale to, for us to get. Cost of goods sold. We good? Smiling? Happy? Okay. So now we need to look through that trial balance that they gave us and see what we've got. Well, they gave us cost of goods sold. They just give us the number? Yeah. Well, what am I doing all this work for? <laughs> this is good for you to know. <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. I mean, you know, you need to know this. Mm -hmm. But think about it in terms of we had some stuff. We bought some more. This is what it cost to get it here and get it on the store shelf. So that, you know, that plus the beginning inventory is everything we could have sold. Cost of goods available. Less ending inventory gives me, here's what I really sold. The cost of what I really sold. Okay, so the book just made me do that for nothing. They give us cost of goods sold. How much is the cost of goods sold? Seventy-eight thousand four hundred. Even. Okay. So I have net net sales, less cost of goods sold gives me what? Gross profit. And if someone could spot me the math again. Fifty-six thousand seven hundred is our gross profit. What comes after gross profit? Operating expenses. Operating expenses. What kind of operating expenses do we have? Okay, we've got selling. How much is that? Fourteen thousand one hundred. Okay. What else do we have? Admin. Admin. At fifteen thousand four hundred. Okay. Remember, I can abbreviate when I'm writing on the board. Can you guys abbreviate on the test? No. Nope. Good. Okay. That's fair, right? <laughs> okay, what other expenses do we have? Bad debit. Yeah. We have go ahead. I was just going to ask that because it go there or does it go under other expenses below? Bad debt. Bad debt is part of your cost of doing business. Okay. It's not extraordinary or anything like that. So, um, <clears throat> how much is our bad debt expense? Sixteen hundred dollars, okay. Yes, sir. Do you want us to include it in the selling expense? Um, no, let's just show it. Okay. I don't want to do any math and have to figure it all out. Uh, what's the next one? That's all of them. Okay, that comes later, though, right? So these are all my operating expenses. So. Total 
$31,000. Total operating expenses are how much? Thirty-one. One hundred. Okay. Total operating expenses. Gross profit minus total operating expenses gives me. Uh, what? Income from operations. So help me out here. That's uh, twenty five six. Okay, income from operations. Then we would have what after that? Other income and expense. What do we have for other income and expense? Nothing. Okay, so we're going to go right to ta income taxes. Income tax expense. How much is that? $7,680. Oh, they had to throw in the 80 bucks, didn't they? Okay, so what do I have? Income from operations minus income tax expense gives me? Net income of? Not, does not start with a 2. 17,920. Like that. Good? Questions? Happy? Happy, happy? All right, <clears throat> so what's the next thing that they want us to do in this problem? It wasn't earnings per share one of them? So let's, let's do earnings per share first, just because I feel like it. Earnings per share is, what's the formula? Net income divided by average, average number of shares. So in this case, net income is 17,920 divided by the number of shares given was 10,000, I believe, right? And what does that equal? 1.792. Yeah, it's $1.79 per share. Okay. <clears throat> then they wanted us to calculate receivables turnover. Yes. Okay. What's the formula for receivables turnover? Net sales divided by average not receivable. Over average AR. So what's our net sales? Right here. Yes? Okay. So 135 divided by, do we know what our accounts receivable is? Does it give it in the problem? Because I don't have it in my income statement anywhere, right? Yeah. yeah. It does have yeah, the two, the beginning accounts receivable. So it gives them to us. Okay. What's the beginning? Uh, $16,000. And the ending? Divide by 2. Beginning plus ending divided by 2. So 135.1 one divided by? 15,200. Oh, this is 15,200. All said and done. So 135.1 one divided by 15,200 is? 889 turns per year. So how many times did we collect our accounts receivable during the year? On average, nine times, right? So <clears throat> what's the next step in this? Can I tell how many days that is? What's my average uh, outstanding receivables? We talk, the book gives us this. We take the average turns and divide it by what? Is that right? Well, it's the other way. 
I was waiting for somebody to stop me and go, hey, no. Everybody went, oh, it's okay. Uh, 365, number of days in a year, divided by 8.89 equals 40 point what? Well, it's actually 41.05. 41.05. 41.05. 41 and a half days is how long it takes us on average to collect our receivables. So is that, is that good? Well, it depends is the correct answer. What terms did we advance to our customers? If it's net 60, this rocks. <laughs> this is awesome. If it's net 30, we need to tighten up our, our policies and practices here, don't we? And fix the problem. Because this is cash flow. Cash is? King. Cash is king. You don't have cash, you don't have a business. Good. Does the problem ask us to do anything else? No. No. <laughs> Questions? You guys are awfully quiet tonight. What? It's going to be early night. Okay. Are we just absorbing data? Is everybody okay with this? Yes. I need to make sure you're okay with this. How about the people on the left side of the plane? Are we good? Yes? Okay. I got one nod in their head, the rest just looking at me. Okay. So, moving on, you wanted to do a bank reconciliation. Okay. Let us do a bank reconciliation. Is everybody good at this? I can erase? Okay. We're going to do the bank rec right here. So, since this is, which problem is it? 6.5? 6, 6 in the new book, 6, 5 in the old book. It's your problem, you may read it to us. Yeah. The bookkeeper at Jefferson Company has not reconciled the bank statements with the cash accounts, saying, I don't have time. You have. You have been asked for a part of the reconciliation and review the procedures with the bookkeeper. The April 30th, 2014 bank statements at the April at the April letter accounts for cash show the following. Okay, so where are we going to start with this? Who, what, and when, right? I'm not going to write it up there, but we're going to have a bank reconciliation. I like to do them side by side, where I have our books and the bank side by side. All right, most people do top and bottom, but I do them different. They behave the same way. So I have beginning balance by our books and per the bank. Okay, so I'm, I'm assuming that's what they're going to tell us next. Yeah. So this bank statement, balance April 1st, 2014, deposits during April, 37,100. It tells us how much the deposits were? Yeah, during April. They have a whole bank statement. Oh, okay. So <clears throat> what is the... I need to look, don't I? Six seven. That's six eight. I need to write the read the right one. Oh, there's the whole bank statement. So, all right, we're gonna go with that. Their their balance is twenty three five seventy, or at least in my book. What's the bottom number in your book? Okay. I'm sorry, 26. Seven. 26 000. 070. Okay, good. So it tells us that. And then does it tell us um, there's our cash account? So we had a balance of 23.5. We made a deposit of 41. Well, I'm going to read yours real quick because we're using your numbers. We have a balance of 23.5, we made deposits of 41.5, and we wrote checks for 41,100. 
So if someone could do the math there, what's our ending balance for that account? What? 23,900. Good. So let's then look at this. Um, the book has deposits of how much? Or the bank has deposits of how much? 37,100. So the bank has deposits of 37,100. And we have 41.5, I believe, correct? Yeah. Okay, what's the difference between the two? 4,400. Okay. I'm assuming that those are deposits that are outstanding. We, you know, took them to the bank, say, on the 31st of the month, but they didn't process them and put them into our account until the following day. So that's what's called a deposit in transit. Some people, for whatever reason, mail their deposits in. They put them in an envelope and stick them in the mail. Don't know why. Um, and your deposits in transit, the number of days gets bigger. So I'm going to deposits in transit. <clears throat> so I <clears throat> think about this. I think I made $41,500 in deposits. The bank only has 37. Do they know about the deposit in transit? No. So I need to do what to the bank balance? I need to add to the bank balance, right? I don't need to affect our books because we've already got it recorded. So I've got $4,400. Okay. Then, oh, hang on. Now that I'm looking at the book, um, we're going to change this number. Part of the deposits column is interest collected, which is something else. <clears throat> so this is not correct. Okay, how much is the number for just the deposits of checks? Well, that is just the deposits. No. See, notice how the first one is deposits during April, 36,100. Then it says interest collected. $1,180. And th then the point is, did we deposit something called interest? No. No. So we probably don't have it recorded in our books. Right. Okay. But so I. They must list them separately, so why was that number wrong? Well. Because wasn't that just the checks that didn't include the interest? Because the, the interest is like on a note that they collected for us. Sometimes companies will do this, they will lend someone money and tell the, the person that lent them money, go make the payments directly to my bank account or to have the bank collected as their agent. So we probably don't have that $1,100 recorded in, in our books. But the bank has it already. It's not a normal, uh, it's not like we got a, a customer came in and wrote us a check and it was one of our normal everyday deposits. So they're, they're separate. So I want to treat it separately. But if we add it together with the, with the normal paper deposits like we make every day for sales, it, it'll get missed. We're, we're, it, we'll make a mistake. Let me show you. Okay? So we have 41.5. The bank the <laughs> deposit was 36. You have 37,100. Yes, sir, question. I was just going to say, because he has a different book, different numbers. He has the, you're looking at seven. Yeah, do you have the 1,180 bucks? Yeah. yeah. It's okay. Separate. It's already separate. It's already separate from the deposit. Is what I'm. Yes, but it's only on the bank statement. Notice our cash account doesn't show it down below. Okay. So wait, are you gonna subtract it from that? Or add no, 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 no. Okay. So we made deposits of this. Yeah. This is from sales. Every day, customers come in, they write us checks, or they give us cash. We go to the bank. It's this. The bank only has this much, meaning there's a deposit in transit of, help me out. It's still 4,400, okay. I was saying, it's like they're already separate, right? No, it's just, we're getting confused with the different numbers, with the different amounts, okay? We're going to get to that interest in a minute, though. what our balance 
but it's, it's a deposit. We need to increase our balance. Okay. okay, so let's deal with it now. I'm going to have interest collected. And is it 1180? Yes. Okay, so I need to increase our balance. So I'm going to add it to our side, our books. So the bank took it out, but we have to add it back in. The bank hasn't taken it out. Okay. Notice on the bank statement, it's in the deposit column. It's in addition to our balance. Okay. <clears throat> but because they collected on this note from somebody, we didn't know about it until we got the bank statement. Okay? okay? Everybody good with that? Over here? Okay. So I need to add it here. <clears throat> The next thing we need to look at are the checks. According to our records, we wrote checks of 41,100. The bank, if you look, says checks cleared during April 44,500. Do you have a different number? Yeah, we're going to use his numbers. 43 even. Okay, so let me ask you a personal question. The bank says more checks cleared the account than we wrote. What the heck is going on here, right? Somebody stealing from us? Yes, sir. Actually, more cleared than we say we wrote. Well, it could be a check from on someone else's account, or it could be checks that were floating around outstanding from the previous month. So I need to read the problem more and find out what it tells me about that. <clears throat> Comparison of checks written before and during April with checks cleared through the bank showed outstanding checks at the end of April of 4100 no deposits in transit were carried over from March, but a deposit in, in transit, but a deposit was in transit at the end of April. We got the deposit in transit, and we're doing the April statement. A comparison of checks written before and during April with the checks cleared through the bank showed outstanding checks at the end of April of 4100. Okay, here's, a pro here's something I hate. They're telling us that the outstanding checks are, you have 4,100 also in the new edition? Okay, the outstanding checks are $5,600. But then they show us this, so anybody with some common sense is going to look at this and go, eh, this doesn't make sense. Right? So what we're saying is there must have been more checks from before that cleared and some of some of these didn't clear and it creates this number here everybody understand it's a, it's a little confusing the way they set it up so there were checks we're doing april back in uh, march at the end of march the outstanding checks were probably say seven thousand bucks so, you know, that would account for this. You would add the 7,000 to what we wrote and do the math and come up with the right number. Good? Who have I confused other than myself? All right. We're going to have to do the math correctly and make this work. Um, 56. So do you take the difference between those two numbers and subtract that from the 56? No, you shouldn't normally have to do this. Okay. Okay, so I'm now trying to make it work with this kind of botched example. <laughs> Good luck to me, right? Um, what's the difference here? Seventy five hundred. Good. My math good there. So in March, at the end of March, the outstanding checks were seventy-five hundred bucks. Must have been. We wrote checks for forty-one thousand one hundred. So the total checks that were out there that could have cleared our bank were forty-one 
48,600. Good, but only 43,000 cleared, leaving us about a balance of 5,600 in the outstanding check category. So using the numbers they gave us, I'd have to back into March's outstanding checks to get this. In the, in the normal world, we wouldn't be backing into it. We'd know this number. We would know this number. We would do this calculation here and come up with this. Actually, what you do is you look at every check individually and you check them off and then you add up the ones that aren't checked off. Okay? Okay, let me go through it one more time. Based on my math, the outstanding checks at the end of March must have been $7,500. According to the book, we wrote $41,100 in checks during April. So in total, $48,600 worth of checks were floating around out in the world that could have cleared our bank. Of those, only $43,000 dollars worth cleared our bank. This is what's left floating around out in the world. Good? Okay. So this is what's called outstanding checks. And it's, does the bank know about them? No. No. Do we know about them? Yes. yes. So I need to do what to the bank the balance? Money. I need to subtract it from the bank balance. Because those are going to clear and reduce this balance that the bank has. Okay? Is everybody good with that? You probably do this all the time. Just last week. Okay, does it give us any other information? We have an NSF check and a bank service charge. The bank always gets a service fee, right? They're like bookies. They're always making money. We waive some fees. Oh, okay, so I have a bank service fee. How much is the bank service fee? 50, 50 bucks. That's steep. Can you wave that for me? <laughs> so, yeah, so does the bank know about the $50 charge? Yes. Do we know about the $50 charge? We do now, but we didn't before the statement. So we need to take that out of our balance. I didn't do it. <laughs> Stupid thing rebooted. It had PowerPoint ready to go and everything. I love technology in this room. It's awesome. Oh, yeah, pretty much. Um, Watsonville's fun, though. The lights just go out all by themselves, all in the middle of class. You know, it. it even when I'm up teaching, the lights will just go push. So a lot of times I'll leave, it's supposed to be environmentally friendly, you know, save electricity. I run the projectors just so that there's always light if the power goes out. <laughs> yeah, I have to. So, okay, so there's one other thing in there. It was a bad check. Someone wrote us a bad check. Banks refer to it as not sufficient funds, meaning the deadbeat didn't have money in their account. Oh. Hey, when they, hold it, when they owe me the money, it's a bad thing. When it happens to me, it's unfortunate and I should have my fees refunded, right? <laughs> okay. There you go. <laughs> so it's an NSF check. How much is our non-sufficient funds check? 160? Yes. Okay. And the bank knows about it, but we maybe don't. So I need to do what with our balance? Add or subtract? Subtract. subtract. Okay? So there's nothing else, I believe. And with that said, what is my adjusted balance? Someone can spot me the math. Did you check both of them? Yeah. Okay.
Good? So notice, even though I started with dramatically different numbers, we were able to figure out the differences and reconcile and come up with what's our true cash balance. And this is the number that should be in our general ledger for cash. 24,870. Well, right now I have 23,900. How do I get the balance to be 24,870? I need to do adjusting entries. I need to write an entry for this. And here's part of why I like doing them side by side like this. It's easy to review. I can come over and write in the account number. What's our interest revenue account? I don't know, let's say it's 510. And what's our bank NSF fee? Let's say that's 612. NSF checks go in. Where do NSF checks go? Okay, I heard two answers. Bad debt and accounts receivable. Both answers are correct. <laughs> Think about it. This was probably, uh, this might have been a customer that came in and wrote us a check at the cash register. They still owe me the money, I still want it, I'm going to try and collect it, right? It might have been an accounts receivable to begin with and the guy mailed in his check and we deposited it. In either of those cases, I want to take this and go right back to accounts receivable with it. Because he still owes me the money and I've got to track it. However, if this is like the third time this check has bounced, or twice, and the, you, know, you call the guy, and they're out of business, or they filed for bankruptcy, I'm never going to get it, then you come down and you go to bad debt. Okay? So it could go either way, it depends. Now, with bad debt, does it go to a bad debt expense? What did we talk about last time? It's like writing it off, right? It's like allowance. I know that's sloppy, but it says allowance. Remember we set up the allowance for doubtful accounts? Mm -hmm. If you're using the allowance method, you don't go to bad debt expense, you go and post it against the allowance. So you take it out of the allowance. You don't have Correct. allowance. Correct. Now, <laughs> too many what ifs. If it was AR, it goes to the allowance. If it was a customer that came in and, and wrote it at the cash register and it was never in AR, then it's just bad debt expense anyway, no matter what. Okay. I mean, you've got to kind of stop and think where did it come from, what caused it. Yeah. There's a couple possibilities. So that would still go to bad debt expense and not some other expense account? Because it was never in AR, and the idea behind the allowance was to figure out what your net realizable right. receivables were. But, it was never a receivable. But isn't the bad debt expense for that same purpose? No. But you estimated off of credit sales. Yes, this was not credit sales. The guy came in and wrote me a, ch a check at the cash register. He paid cash. It wasn't part of net credit sales. Well, since I'm not affecting my allowance and going straight to bad debt, it doesn't affect your, your calculation. Okay, are we good? Questions on how to do bank reconciliation? It won't have all of this garbage over here. <laughs> okay, so it will be what I consider to be easier. Yes, ma'am. What was the 37,100 Oh, this was, um, we said we made $41,000 in deposits. The bank says they only have 37. So the difference is we have a $4,400 deposit in transit. Okay. You know, we made this on the 31st, and it won't show up in the statement until the 1st. So you're going to give us the first 2,000, the, the, the 41 and the I'm probably going to give you these, this number. And, prob and probably that number. I'll just give you the number. Okay? Or I'll give you a couple of checks and you can mark them off and figure out which ones are left, add them up, and do the number. Okay? It'll be pretty straightforward. I'm not throwing any curveballs at you. Good? Okay. Any other questions? None? I'm getting the deadpan look from the guys in the back. You guys are smiling. Everybody's good. Okay. So I have to um, 
get my presentation up and running. Stop that for just a second.